Welcome to the Business of Beauty, where we help beauty entrepreneurs in building their business and reaching their dreams. This is your host, David Lee. Our guest today is all about skin wellness and self-love. As a licensed esthetician, she has made it her mission to share her story with domestic violence and how it helped shape her as a person, uh, as well as how she overcame it. She is proud of her up-and-coming skin wellness Chica brand. She'll be sharing what she's doing to grow and build the trust of the brand. Um, And her superpower is being able to listen to a podcast, apply hydrogelly face masks, uh, drink water, and reply to DMs all at the same time. Welcome to the show, Samantha uh, Mo... Lean? Molina. <laughs> Molina, sorry, yeah. yeah. Samantha Molina at Skin Wellness Chica. Hi, I'm Samantha Molina, or everybody calls me Sam, whichever is easier for you to remember. And I am building my brand, Skin Wellness Chica, and I'm located in the Chicagoland and Chicago area, but I grew up in the Midwest. So nice, that's where I'm nice. at right now recording this. <laughs> very cool, very cool. Um, so, now, now you're so you're you're pretty much just starting to build up your brand, right? At yes. probably the most difficult time <laughs> to yes. build the brand, right? Absolutely. But it's okay, right? Yep. There's there's, uh, you know, in, in some ways people look at it as a difficult time, but also opportunities, new opportunities. Yep. You know, you don't have an yep. old infrastructure in place. This is a exactly. new, you know, new business, new way of thinking. You know, people right. are seeing it differently and you're able to, it's much easier for you to, to change and adapt. Sure. Right. And that's kind of one of the thing, things we're, we're going to be covering here. Uh, a, you know, what your business is all about and then B, how did you, how did you get to this point? Right. Like how did, how did oh, you absolutely. start it? What was, what was, what was going through your, your mind on, on starting right. it, especially now? Uh, you know, I love to hear that. So let's start with, tell us about the skin wellness uh, Chica brand. Oh, absolutely. So whenever I decided to get on Instagram to start building myself up as a student in aesthetician school, I had no idea with what I was doing with social media. I had played around with it here and there, maybe just uploading a couple pictures, but never really understanding the, the structure of Instagram or how social media works or how exactly, you know, what time you're supposed to post and that sort of thing. I did not understand the algorithm. And it's still something that I'm learning every single day and trying my best to understand so I can grow my my brand more. So initially, I started out with an account uh, that I started out and I called it Healing Beauty, but I had no idea what my message was behind that. I just knew that I wanted to build a brand that was very much about self-love and being accepted in whatever type of situation you are in your life at that time. So initially when I started Skin Wellness Chica, I wanted to make sure that I brought in my personal struggles with domestic violence to the platform and combine my passion of skincare and my passion for advocating for those of domestic violence because myself, I went through that for about four years with, with a person that I was involved with in a relationship. So I decided to merge those two together and to really promote a Instagram and a skin wellness page dedicated to self-love and a bunch of skin tips and a lot of esthetician tips that I've learned when I was in school and even working on clients uh, to be able to have people feel accepted and not feel like I was too in their face maybe trying to promote a product or a service because that's not what I'm about. I'm really about having somebody come to me in an open space with an open door that they can tell me anything from maybe a skin issue that they're having to some of their issues that they're having on a personal level because I was trained for that in the state of Illinois to be able to advocate for those in domestic violence or any sort of trauma related issue. Mm -hmm. So in in a way it was more so of a counseling type of thing. And I realized in my work in domestic violence that I was very self-aware of what I went through I did a lot of personal healing to overcome it and a lot of a lot of, of failure too. I, I failed in almost everything that I did. And when I tried to go to school the first time as an esthetician, 
I didn't succeed after a week because I, I had to drop out because I was just not in a good headspace mentally. I, I could not concentrate on anything other than what I was going through on a personal struggle. And then a year later, I decided to enroll when I felt better uh, mentally. And that's when I succeeded and actually graduated uh, the end of February of, of this year from oh, esthetician nice. school. Mm -hmm. So it's relatively soon in a time where things are very crazy with this pandemic going on. Yeah. Like you mentioned in the beginning, it's harder to build a brand now. Yeah. It's different. The infrastructure is a lot different. It's not the same. Things are changing and they have changed for the better, I think, in many mm -hmm. ways in our industry. In an industry where infection control and sanitation always is the standard, even more now than ever, that yeah. is going to be the standard set at a higher bar and level. And that's also what I'm about with my brand because I know that infection control and sanitation is a big part of what keeps your reputation up and going in this industry. Mm -hmm. And that's exactly what I plan to uh, emphasize as mm -hmm. the time goes by and when things get better in what's going on in our world, I definitely would love to be able to have that be a, a big emphasis in that. But for now, building the brand, having people understand who I am, what I went through, and what I'm currently doing now to, to, to build a brand and having them see the, the raw side of things, yeah. even the parts of it that are very, um, very vulnerable that probably would be too embarrassing for some to share. I'm, I'm not afraid to do that because I've looked a lot internally to be able to accept myself and accept my past for what it is. And, and also to be able to share that and, and to be able to gain people's trust my audience's trust, whether that be fellow estheticians, students in the making that are in esthetician school or clients, because at the end of the day, I'm, I'm not just an esthetician, I, I'm also an advocate. And I have that, that heart that, that wants to be able to listen and, and advise and counsel somebody into, into developing themselves into a better person and, and providing resources if need be. Nice, nice. So yeah, so you're building your brand based on your personal journey, your your you know your that's your story right there. Um, now, for for your for your brand, is it is it a product based? Is it service based? A mix of both? Like, what does that look like? Sure. sure. So initially, I'm actually in the beginning stages of de developing a. Um, kind of like a, a product for your face, kind of like similar mm. to ice globes or a face roller. I'm okay. in the stages of where where I'd like to initially go with that and, and see exactly what is something that can I can relate with my brand. I, I love to use a lot of facial tools in my sort of facial routine and any sort of facial I've done on clients. That's something that I emphasize, facial massage, because at the end of the day for me, yeah massage is very healing and in turn when something is very healing like that to the skin it affects your nervous system which affects your mental state of being in the end yeah so being able to tie in my past with a facial tool on an e-commerce site like shopify is definitely the plan that i'm going with right now especially at a time like this where we can't have um, any sort of brick and mortar open right now yeah, with uh, yeah. COVID-19. Social, it's, like face-to-face, -face, you know, interactions. Yeah. So I'd love to be able to build my brand like that initially yeah. and build a trust with that and also just demonstrate the tool through social media, through Instagram, YouTube, Facebook, because those are the platforms that, I'm, that I have right now. Nice. And um, in turn when things get better i definitely am planning to open up my own skin studio in chicago and to be able tr to transition that facial tool into the studio into the spa room and treatment room and to be able to utilize that and also be available for purchase because nice. it's not something i just want to use i want my clients to be able to yeah. use it at home and and to be able to post about it on social mm -hmm. media and just get the word out there yeah um, and also build that local awareness of an esthetician that you know that isn't just an esthetician that there's something beyond that you know i think we get the rep that our industry is not really real and we don't do anything other than superficial things because that's not what i'm here for i'm here for a deeper purpose that's awesome
Yeah. Now, can we dig a little deeper on your product development? Um, so where are you sure. at on the roller? Uh, how, how did you find, you know, like uh, the, the manufacturer? Um, how did you, you know, come up with the idea? I guess let's start with that and then yes. like to build out and where you're at. Yes. Yeah, so I'm looking at a couple manufacturers right now in Florida for this uh, for this specific tool yeah. and what came about to finding the idea for this tool was just a couple years ago about three years ago I just got involved with using gua sha's and jade rollers for myself and at the time that's when I gained a, a huge interest in skincare I've always had an interest but even more so because I really wanted to basically become a professional in the industry. That's when I realized that that's when, what I wanted to do for the rest of my life. So I just started Googling one day, you know, facial tools and up popped up jade rollers and gua sha's and I bought some on a website. Um, it was from a product line called Ling New York and they sell these amazing jade rollers and gua sha's made out of, out of real jade and I ordered some and I started using them on myself and then I realized that since this really helped my skin when I started to develop acne from the trauma that I was going through mm -hmm. uh, and I just started picking at it and this tool started to help and heal my skin I knew that I needed to do something along those lines to to be able to build a brand around um, so in the beginning stages of finding a manufacturer it's not easy because there's a lot of a lot of manufacturers out there but a lot of them don't understand what exactly you're looking for and you have to be very detail oriented to be able to get your point across so you get the perfect or near perfect product that you're wanting to get developed but in the beginning stages it's it's a lot of um it's a lot of ups and downs it's not easy yeah. to to be able to to get to that point and even now it's not easy. <laughs> yeah, now I'm curious, like, does the manufacturer, do they have designers on staff with the CAD drawings and the designs? Or did you have to come up with that yourself and say, okay, here's the CAD drawing, here's the 3D prints, like, this is what I want you to make? So there's been a, a mix of them. There's some that want an actual, like, kind of drawing so you could illustrate, to, illustrate that to them. But there are some that actually have a team specifically for that. So it, it's been a mixture of that, but I feel in order to get my point across, I definitely need to draw it out with some yeah. details explained on the side, because if I just let them do it on their, on their own, I felt like they, they didn't really understand my idea. And sometimes yeah. you have to take matters into your own hands. Oh, yeah, absolutely. That's what I'm about. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Now, yeah. Uh, what about like testing? Did you have them make a prototype and for you to, to test it to see okay yes the the drawing to to actually manufacturing it to now using the product it it works as intended oh my goodness so for the prototype <laughs> that's something that I'm next in line with because okay. I'm still tweaking that design that design for me it has to be I want it to be near perfect because nothing is perfect right mm -hmm. you you really have to make sure that it's going to serve its purpose for one yeah. and another thing I want it to be able to be travel friendly okay. uh, so people can take it with them wherever they're at whether they're mm -hmm. traveling for work or whether they're you know at home or wherever they're yeah. going I, I want it to be able to be utilitarian and useful mm -hmm. um, in any situation that they're in so at the end of the day, for me, making sure that that design is is near perfect is um, is need it needs to be done before I, I get a prototype out because the prototype once I get it, that's where I'm really going to be making my judgment call if I need to uh, do something different or start all over again or say yes, this is it and pull the plug on a bunch of orders. <laughs> okay, nice, nice. Yeah. Now, um, what? are your differentiators like what would make your rollers different than all the other rollers and options out there is like one being absolutely that be one one differentiator like being able to put it in a bag put it in a purse be able to travel with it yes so for us for a roller like an ice roller or for any skin tool 
for the most part, they're pretty travel friendly, right? They, you know, they're small in nature, unless you're talking about maybe like an ice globe, uh, you know, those are actually made out of glass and those are not travel friendly yeah. at all. You know, if you drop them, you drop them and all the liquid falls on the ground. Yeah. And that has happened to me. So for me, I'm not looking to make something that everybody else has. I want something to to be different and to yeah. have a yeah. have a differentiator in the marketplace mm -hmm. so it can set me apart. Yeah. And for me, I won't say any specific details just yet, but for the product that I, I have in mind right now that I'm working on is definitely going to eliminate that big um, that big gray area in the marketplace so it's not too fragile. Um, oh, for okay. me, when you're working with tools, they can be very fragile. Even gua sha's and jade rollers, if you drop one on the floor, like on a concrete floor or on a wooden yeah. floor, it's yeah. going to break. And that's happened to me so many it, times. Which is... So, is in a lot of flooring in a lot of places restaurants businesses right yeah like their right. floor is not soft it's not like made of carpet right so absolutely and even in um and now with what's going on more than ever you have to make sure that no matter what tool you're using it also for for the most part depending on what facial protocol you have it, it has to be or it needs to be disposable too Mm. instead of using items that you know you could you could wash and disinfect or, or whatever i, I want to yeah. be able to to also be able to create a product that could also maybe target that sort of um issue that we might be dealing with in the future moving forward after coronavirus because the way that protocols are done in the treatment room are going to have to improve significantly and any tool or implement that we use has to follow that um to make sure that we keep our clients safe as well uh, us safe as estheticians and service providers yeah yeah for sure for sure yeah mm -hmm. that's, that's great so now from uh let's talk about the the marketing standpoint uh i know right. that's a few steps probably uh further out until you actually get like a more concrete product and making a decision but we'd like right. to know what your plan um or what your plans are on on you know where you're marketing how you're marketing you know who you're marketing to for this product right. you know obviously using it for your you know for yourself for your for your location that you'll eventually open up but also working mm -hmm. with other estheticians um like what you know so let's talk about marketing from the standpoint from sure the standpoint. like let's start with once you decide on the product where do right. you plan on or how do you plan on marketing um the this product or the roller Oh, absolutely. Initially, now that I have all this downtime, this is the time that I've been really focusing on growing my Instagram, building my audience up and engaging with them, whether that be estheticians, uh, estheticians that own franchise spas or spas in general, and just clientele that I have in the pipeline waiting. Mm -hmm. um, a way to build my marketing and for virtually almost cheap or to free yeah. uh, it would be through Instagram promoting right. it through Instagram using it myself showing people how to do it uh, through how-to videos maybe boomerangs step-by-step right. -step videos having manual guides made through canva part like third-party apps like canva to be able to create content for my feed and for my audience so they understand how to use it and exactly what it is yeah. because for the most part unless you're using Instagram or Facebook ads to, to be able to promote a product, mm -hmm. you could do that virtually for free through through social media. And that's the beauty about our marketing today, yeah. that it's so low cost mm -hmm. and, 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 that, and in some cases free to be able to promote a product that you're that you're offering and even a service, which is amazing. Even now more than ever, that's that's the beauty of our industry. Even though things are not going the way they need to be we have that option to us and in this downtime that we have it's mm -hmm. so important to be able to to utilize that time wisely to be able to to build yourself up and build a brand or invest some time in yourself that way but honestly that's that's how i'm going to plan it so that's my yeah. you know my plan of attack to be able to utilize my instagram yeah. and to be able to connect with my instagram that way and also um eventually down the line um 
create a newsletter um, letting people know about this product maybe by week by monthly or monthly mm -hmm. you know how to use it tips on how to use it with specific masks or sheet masks how to penetrate your product and why that's important right. um, as well as maybe also creating a website obviously for it so people can purchase it right. so right. yes so it sounds like your main target market especially on instagram is the estheticians right absolutely okay. yes yeah. so it's not really um straight to the end user that's getting the application it's it's the individual that would uh would be utilizing your tool for their absolutely. clients uh, oh absolutely i'd love to be able to tap into the end user at some point yeah. but it's so important for me for fellow estheticians to be able to see the product that i have Mm -hmm. because I'd love to be able to offer wholesale as well. So yeah. they could use that in their treatment room and to be able to sell that to their clients and retailing. Whenever you have your own studio or any sort of esthetician business in general or a spa, retailing can almost double your, your income and your profits, which oh, yeah. is amazing. Mm -hmm. And not only is retailing smart, but it's also good practice for you because it enhances your business skills, it enhances your communication skills, and at the end of the day, you're assisting somebody with their skin issues and conditions. That's why they came to you in the first place. Yeah. And then they, you know, they, they came to seek professional advice from you and yeah. to be able to purchase a product from a qualified and licensed esthetician with high standards. Yeah. I, I want to be able to build that uh, sort of awareness around my product too, because if anything, you know, one of my missions it is to be able to promote that too. high standards of cleanliness and quality and, and infection control with everything that I do, including mm -hmm. the actual distribution of the product and the packaging. I mean, everything. I mean, yeah. when it comes down to it, a lot of people are ordering online right now. And a lot of people are even scared to order online because of what's going on. But I, I don't want anybody to feel like that now or in the future years to come because um, this has, you know, this has definitely changed our industry even more. And that's the kind of white space that I see right now. You know, what can I do to, 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 um, make our industry better? What can I do to build awareness around it and yeah. set myself apart? Because when you're building a brand, you really have to set yourself apart because there's going to be hundreds of people doing what you're doing. Mm -hmm. And not everybody is going to be doing things the same and there might be people doing things the same but for me i want to really stick out like a sore thumb and i'm not afraid to put myself out there and even embarrass myself if i have to and make mistakes because that is what it's all about yeah absolutely and 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 one of the things i want to add is um and also for the viewers um what uh what you're doing is really smart essentially with uh by going straight to the estheticians rather than straight to consumer it's actually harder to go in the broad like consumer side um right. the, the marketplace right. is is um the Saturated. market is too big and too wide and also right. if you look at your individual like roi the return on investment you're going right. to get a higher level of roi um on an esthetician because an esthetician may may buy boxes and boxes of your rollers Whereas a consumer may buy one or two, right? And oh, sure, they're, they'll refer, um, but the esthetician, um, they're, they're essentially your distributor now at that point. And you oh. know, as far as like, they're your sales, they're, you know, boots on the ground. They're like your salespeople. Yeah. Once yeah. They're, they're trained and they see the high quality product and is working for their clients, um, right. it's much easier to scale out. So yeah, oh. it, makes, it makes a lot of sense. And, and oh, so, absolutely. So I guess, uh, and correct me if I'm wrong. So what you mentioned on the retail space, you're looking at like, you know, create, having your own retail space, um, but more so not just on, um, on, sure, it's a, another revenue generating piece, but it's also an area to test out your product, right? To get immediate yes. feedback. Um, oh, on, absolutely. Um, and, and, and that's, crucial to any successful mm -hmm. business is to hear yes. feedback from your customers from your vendors right from your yes. from your um uh, partners in this case you know, right um right so, yeah that's that's very smart um yes i i wanted to make sure that i i went into a niche marketplace 
within the industry and the marketplace because like you said the industry is too big uh, when it comes to that you know to a specific like like skincare or skin rollers i mean it's so saturated there's a lot of competition but when you yeah, target absolutely. you know either the end user or the esthetician the estheticians are more more specific and more niche yeah. and we do use those in our treatment rooms especially now more than ever they've become super popular and if anything it's i think it's definitely going to grow exponentially because clientele really like to add those to their treatment services it makes it better it makes it a better experience it experience and if they can purchase it for at home use that's like the best of both worlds because yeah. they're going to get more bang for their buck out of a facial that they received in the treatment room it's going to help them in the long run and it's definitely going to be something that they invest for themselves and in the end of the day that's a good thing because um why not you you have to treat yourself right you have to love yourself and yeah. also keep yourself healthy and your mental state of mind healthy and yeah. and facials really do that they do <laughs> they <Yeah>. do <laughs> i tell everybody that until until they don't uh they ask, ask me why why do you say that that doesn't make any yeah. sense i'm like well let me give you a facial continuously every month then you'll see why and then when they come back to me they realize oh that's why there's a yeah. lot of a lot of mental things that I didn't realize affected me until I got a facial from you. I'm like, yeah, you relaxed. <laughs> oh, nice. Um, now let's, and, and it's just a really good timing too with, you know, like, I mean, bad timing with starting, uh, you know, like with what's going on, right? But it's good timing to hear from someone that is starting their business in this time. So like, I'm curious to hear like, your thoughts and the emotions that you were going through from like graduating in February, right? So at, at what point did you realize like Corona was, uh, you know, th this, this pandemic was a real thing and, <laughs> and like, oh. oh my God, right? It's like, oh wow. Like, what, yeah. you know, what is going on, right? And I, <laughs> in February, I mean, did you, did you, did you even know this existed? Oh my goodness. So <laughs> a lot of people are going to either love me to death for this or hate me for this, <laughs> but I am going to be very honest. I did not think this was going to be this big, this whole pandemic. A lot of people, I, yeah. I brushed it off as whatever. This is just, this yeah, is just, just like another, another, another flu, flu right? Thing. <laughs> this is the flu season all over again, but yeah. maybe on a higher scale. I won't get it. Nobody will get it in my yeah. family, or I won't know anybody that gets it, whatever. Yeah. So that was the end of February, all of February. I remember yeah. my teacher in class mentioning the coronavirus here and there during class sessions after we do our lecture or just yeah. randomly throughout the day and i would just brush it off and think oh whatever it's yeah. nothing big mm -hmm. and then i graduated school mm -hmm. one week later passed and then things started getting worse mm. and i started watching the news more about it yeah. i started to realize that oh wait this is this might not be what I thought it was. So this yeah. might not just be a cold or a flu. <laughs> then another week passed and I, I knew people on a personal level that had it. Oh. Um, and then a week later passed. I actually work for Mario Trococci. I also work as a guest service representative in the salon and the spa just for additional training and to be able to be exposed to a company with uh, with their training that they have and their exposure, yeah. I started working for them the beginning of March. Yeah. So in the salon, there was a lot of talk about coronavirus. We'd all huddle in the back and watch the, the daily briefing from Governor Pritzker about what was going on. And then the day before we closed the salon, everybody started to realize that, that, we, that we might shut down. This, this is going to take down the entire service-based industry, especially ours. So yeah. one day later, we, we closed down the salon. Until now, we're still closed down. And yeah. um, I realized I should have taken this more seriously in the beginning to be able to process this a little better. It might have helped me um, navigate my emotions better. Because I'll be honest, for the first month after the salon closed down, I was really down in the dumps. I was very, very, because I worked so hard for the last nine months or so to get through school and yeah. to be able to start practicing aesthetics, you know, yeah. in Illinois right away, but then in a blink of an eye, it gets taken away from you. 
Yeah. But at the end of the day, you know, what is something that I can do other than just practicing physical aesthetics on people? What is something I can tap into? What is something that I've always wanted to do? And that is to sell a specific product like a facial tool through an e-commerce site like Shopify and to start my business that way and to catapult yeah. me in that direction. So mm -hmm. that has made my life a lot easier to handle every day to mm -hmm. keep myself motivated and to keep myself happy because I want to be still involved in the industry. Even if we don't open up anytime soon, at least I am growing a part of my brand yeah. that is going to help me down the long road and in the long run, which is great. But initially it was really hard to even face that fact that we're closed down until further notice. That's not yeah, very easy nah, because yeah. that's that's my that's my you know line of work. I actually came from a different career path before I went into uh, went into school. I, I worked for for the domestic violence shelter as a second shift shelter specialist, but my actual career path was sales and account management. So oh. that's what I had experience in years before I decided to go back to school. Mm, okay. So. If anything, it's really helped me become a better esthetician because I can really retail the heck out of a product or service yeah. <laughs> and upgrade, which helps me at the end of the day. Mm -hmm. But if anything, um, I'm using all this downtime to to build myself up through my my brand um, yeah. Yeah. and do everything I need to do to uh, get that prototype to me. <laughs> yeah, and, and thank you so much for for sharing that that you know journey. Because you're not alone. Uh, a lot yep. of a lot of people are going through the same thing, and they're going through and and, and uh, it's it's good that you were able to kind of process through that. You know, get yourself out of yep. the rut, and you know, it, it's hard enough trying to trying to build a business. Okay, and yes, it's it's a lot of for for anyone that hasn't tried yet or thinking about trying. I'll give you a heads up. Okay, it's hard, <laughs> like extremely it hard. Is. It is, yes. you know, extremely stressful at times. Um, yeah. And there's a lot of unknowns already. Just no, no outside, you know, intervention or you know, uh, virus right. or pandemic going on. But you tag right. that on, it's like a double whammy. But but if right. you're able to get through that and and right. continue to grow, then pretty much you can take on anything, you know. And oh, absolutely. <laughs> if you if you can launch a business or get your business started during this time, you're yeah. going to be fine down the yeah. road. And like you said, starting a business is hard. It's very stressful. I myself saw my father start his business when I was in the sixth grade. He started a meat market business that transitioned into a restaurant later down the line. Yeah. And I remember seeing him work 60 hours a week at times, yeah. always being away from the house, being stressed. Yep. But at the end of the day, it really helped him develop himself even more. Yep. And it was it was something that I admired about him and, and took from him and learned from him, even at that young of an age. Yep. And I think that's why I decided to start my own thing after everything mm -hmm. happened with coronavirus to be able to to follow his steps in that. But in a, in a, but in a different industry. Yep. Um, but it sets me apart, too, from him because um, I have so much passion for it and and I love it and I and I've always said that skincare and the whole industry of aesthetics helped me heal even further with my journey in domestic violence it has been more than just uh, something superficial for sure well yeah th thank you again for sharing all that um, it looks like we're you know we, we've already uh, taken a lot of your time and we're we're up to uh, the time where we kind of wrap up how can uh, how can our audience follow you and and reach you? Sure. So my best platform to reach me on is my Instagram page, which is at Skin Wellness Chica, and then I also have my Facebook page, and that is uh, www.facebook.com uh, backslash Skin Wellness Chica, and that's where I post regularly. And then I have an email address where anybody can email me questions or if they want to partner and do collaborations or any sort of partnership, it's skinwellnesschica at gmail.com. Awesome. And for those that, that uh, missed all that, uh, don't worry. It's, it's going to be in the description. It's going to be in the resource area. So you can always click on that area for, uh, for that information. 
So again, thank you so much for your time. Thank you. I uh, hope you guys enjoyed it and we'll see you next time. Bye. Thank you so much. Bye.